Today's date is March 27th, 2020. How's everybody doing? Southwest Radio Group. First viewer on here. What's going on? How's it going in the UK? People are starting to join. Let's let a few people join in here. We'll do some talking. Lodge Car 929. Rich, what's going on, buddy? Christian Trucks and Trains. Oh, JFK 526. What's going on? Everybody's coming on. Boston Finest Rigs. What is going on, people? Glad everybody's joining my live show tonight. I see my special guest has requested to join already. Very good. We'll get to him in just a second. I can't believe I should be at the Louisville Truck Show right now, but it's canceled. It's blowing my mind. The one year I was going to go after 10 years, and I, it, it's uh, canceled. But hopefully there's going to be more big truck shows this year. I'm thinking about going to the cast in Minnesota, and hopefully Shell Super Rigs is still happening. Uh, for show and tell tonight, show you my flatbedred.com coffee mug. Um... Sent to me by Flatbed Red. You should follow her on Instagram and YouTube. And what else? And um, I just want to say to everybody, I've been doing this for like two weeks now. Not really a show. It's just a live feed. Uh, I'm just trying to get people's mind off of other depressing things, if you're into that stuff. And always remember to be very polite to anybody I have on here with your comments or anything. Because if you're not, you're out of my life forever. So... With that, I would like to start introducing my guest tonight. This is like a real show now. I'm, I'm like Jay Leno. I became aware of this guy on Netflix. Now, I'm kind of an American. I always kind of thought I was an American truck snob. Like, I only like the American trucks. And as I got on Instagram, I started liking the European trucks. And Australian trucks started coming into, into my world. And a scroll on Netflix one day, it was a show, Mega Truckers. And I was like, ah, I'll check this out. It's Australian trucks. I mean, it's not American trucks, but I really had nothing else to watch. Holy cow. Best show, best trucker show I've ever seen on, on Netflix or anything else. One season, Mega Truckers. I was hooked. The baddest rigs you've ever seen. So, I've been following the owner of Mega Truckers. Well, the man who's featured in the show, John Kelly on Instagram. I've been following and stalking him, like like everybody does with people on social media. I'm like, kept liking his pictures and trying to get his attention. Like, hey, check me, and I'm over here with this little trucker I'm at in Boston here. And then I uh, chatted with him the other day, and I told him about a live show. And he's like, hey, I'll come on. So with that, I want to introduce everybody to John Kelly. And I can't believe this has actually happened. I'm, I'm pretty excited. I'm sending him the request right now. There he is. Holy cow. How you doing? Good. How you doing? Good. We got good reception too. Fantastic. All, all the way down here in Australia. Yeah. So it's, it's Saturday there, right? Yeah. So Saturday morning. It's about oh, what's it? Nine a.m. Saturday morning. Wow. How's, how's tomorrow looking for us? Is it good? Yeah. T tomorrow's looking good. As as good. I always say to my American friends, we're always you know three hundred and sixty years ahead of you guys on ah. time and and technology. That's funny. That's funny. So what are you up to today on a Saturday? Uh, normally Saturdays I come into the yard here, um, just get the week set up for next week and get a bit of a program happening for the boys, work out right. sort of what, what trucks we've got going where and what trailers. Sure. Hey, did I see you were in America recently? You, you bought a yellow Mac, was it a Magnum? Simple yeah. yeah, so it um, was over there, it was almost 12 months to the day actually. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so um, found that truck. It, it, you know, Facebook makes the world a really small place these days, you know. Sure. And I was sitting on the lounge on a Friday night, as you do, sort of a little bit bored, looking for something to do. And in the commercial classifieds, this Max Superliner comes up. And yeah. I contacted the dude and said, listen, I, I want to buy that truck. And right. He goes, Where, whereabouts are you from? I said, I'm from Australia. He goes... You realise this truck's in California, right? I said, <laughs> I have, have bought trucks from the States before. So, yeah, um, did a deal pretty much over Facebook and shot wow. him a deposit and um, jumped on the next flight out of there to, to head over and, and, and grab the truck. How is it importing a truck from the United States to Australia? Is it oh, hard? It, it, it's 
But for the older trucks, it's a little bit easier. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's actually harder to bring a new truck in the country, believe it or not. Um, any, any truck that's older than 30 years old, we can leave left-hand drive and have it as a novelty sort of show truck. Right. But um, anything that's newer than 30 years, we've got to go through the process of converting it from left-hand drive to right-hand drive. Right. And, you know, the cost of that is about... Or sixty-five to seventy-five thousand Australian, which is probably around about fifty to sixty thousand US. So, okay. You know that that makes a pretty good buy or a deal. You know, pretty expensive by the time you go do that. Sure. I see you. I've seen videos of you driving American trucks and Australian trucks. Is there is it hard to go from one to another, or just natural to you? Um, I remember the when I bought my three fifty-nine Pete out of Miami. Um, first time I've ever been in the States. I think it was 2007, 2008 maybe, and went and grabbed this truck and just just wanted to drive it. You know, like it was you know nearly 20 hours on the plane to get there and all you think about is driving the coolest truck right, you've right. Ever, ever seen. And I jumped in this truck, come to this massive intersection, and the, the biggest thing with you guys is you don't have traffic islands in your intersections. You've got big open intersections. Right. Whereas here, here in Australia, we have an intersection segregated by, you know, concrete islands. So I've wheeled out on, on this main eight-lane highway into the wrong direction of traffic. And Gabby, who sold me the truck, is sitting in the passenger seat going, God damn, you nearly killed us, you know? So, <laughs> so That's it's fun. Getting, getting used to and, I suppose, changing from shifting with your left hand to your right hand, you know? Yeah. I think, uh, I think the clutch and the gas would really confuse Coop. Yeah, it's, it's, that, that's not too bad. I reckon if I gave you a driver one of my trucks over here, you'd, you'd be putting your hand out the window changing, you know? like I don't, I don't, I don't know if I could do it. It would, take, it would take some practice, that's for sure. Yeah. So you spent some time in America? Like, yeah, I, I normally get over two or three times a year. Um, okay. So I've got a, um, a block up in Joplin, Missouri, so I spend a lot of time up there, sort of around the four state guys. I've got a lot of friends up there that I've done business with, you know, for over 15 years. So I love it up there. And okay. um, in the process of getting a place in Nashville, I think Nashville's probably my my, my favourite place in the whole world. Really? Nashville's so, a good town. It, yeah. It's a great town. I, I, I really love it. Uh, yeah, and you must, love country, country. Love, must love country music then, right? I love country music. Yeah. Love, and I've, I've converted quite a few of my good friends um, who, you know, turn their nose up in country and I've actually tucked them under my wing and taken them to Nashville. And it, it's interesting taking a person to Nashville that hasn't been or taking a person um, that hasn't really listened to country music to Nashville um, and right. they come back converted. So that's that's what, you know, part of the states that I really love. Have you gone to any big American truck shows? I suppose in Joplin you've been... Yeah, yeah. I was actually at the very first Guilty by Association show oh. um, back in 2008, 2009. I, actually, when I bought that Pete, I took it up there and the Four State Boys completely stripped that truck for me and, wow. and did an outstanding job. So that was, it was amazing to buy a truck and then have it at, at a show over there. It was all, always a lifelong dream. So that was cool. Um, since then, as you, you know, know, the Guilty by Association show has grown massive. Um, been to Mid-America, um, been up to the Iowa 80 show. Um, oh, wow. I, really, I was hoping to get to Reno, um, you know, I believe that's next month, or, um, or was scheduled for next month. Um, oh, cancel it? Yeah, I, I think it is. I, I think anything on, on, on yeah. the horizon over the next L few months. Louisville, Louisville was supposed to be today. I was supposed to be there. Crazy. So, Crazy. It is, it, uh, so have you driven across America in a truck? Um, I've, I've done a, a fair bit in a truck, yeah. Okay. Um, done heaps in a car. You know, people laugh at me when I come to the States and go and jump in a car and drive from California all the way through to Chicago. Like, yeah. I, I, I love it. I love just having no agenda, jumping in the car, going for a drive, catching up with people. Sure. You know, and just talk and shop. And, you know, these yeah. little towns and places you, you come across and, like, I've bought... I bought my 77 Bandit Trans Am off a wow. guy in Ohio that, that I stumbled across. I bought mm -hmm. a 79 Choo Choo Custom C10 pickup, which I bought out of Oklahoma oh, from a yeah. dude that I stumbled across, you know. Wow. Um, so th th there's been some really cool sort of trips I've done where I've bought mementos home 
that'll be with me and my right. boys to, to, to eternity, you know? Are we smaller than you, coast to coast? Are we shorter? Um, I think that you would be uh, a little bit wider. But okay. I, I, think, I think our country, I, I think your country is probably a little bit larger in, in size. Mm-hmm. I think. Not yeah, you, guys, you guys get into some crazy stuff in Australia, out in the outback. And all those, I mean, like, I don't know if uh, some of us American truckers could even handle that. I'd like to come there someday and try it, but I, I don't know. If, I don't think I can handle it. It's, it's a very different style of trucking. Like you, you guys get so spoiled with the infrastructure and the truck stops you have. You know, um, I, I couldn't believe when I went and picked up that Magnum Superline. Like, we jumped in it. It only carries, what is it, 300 gallons of, of diesel. You know? Only gallons. Those are big tanks for America. Yeah, like, like a couple of yeah. 150s are, are, are big time for America, whereas we're, we're used to having, like, you know, six 150-gal tanks on our trucks and, and fueling them up once every two or three days. So, right. um, you know, a, a decent truck stop for us could be anywhere up to a 1,000 kilometres or 700 miles, you know. Wow. Um, and, you know, access is, is a big thing with, with mm-hmm. what happens with, with us in terms of, you know, having the ability to get into truck stops if we've got a big road train on or a big load. Mm. Um, so you've sort of got to plan your stops a little bit more. Sure. Now, like an American trucker here, if you didn't grow up in it with a family and you go to truck driving school, you go out with a mentor and you get behind the wheel. But in Australia, I mean, there's probably so much more you need to know, changing tires. Like, how do you learn that there? Is it the same way or? Has that um, I, I, I was very fortunate um, that I grew up with my grandfather who had a trucking company that ran Brisbane Darwin, which is probably mm-hmm. one of the best, the, the best runs in in the country here to be the equivalent of you guys running, say, from California to New York or, you, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's the dream run. Um, and my grandfather was super old school. His favourite saying was, Chrome, don't get you home. So, <laughs> I know that one. And, you know, he used to say to me, and I was always really fussy with the trucks and I'd want to polish them up and make them nice, and he used to say, John, don't you dare let me see you in, you know, changing a wheel bearing on the side of the road. You know, you can go uh, polish your truck and you can go put, you know, paint your rims and everything. But if I see you stuck on the side of the road with a wheel bearing, I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so, are you, at the, are, you at the, are you at the shop right now? Yeah, yeah. You wanna, can you show us some, uh, some, some cool stuff? Oh, what's that behind you? Oh, oh, I'm gonna, look I'm gonna, a good friend of mine did a, did a canvas for me, the old Smoking in the Bandit. So, yeah, a bit of a smoke in bandit fan. So, this is our shop. So, I've got a truck sales dealership here. Okay. A little bit patriotic. Sure. Okay. I'll take you for a quick walk around the shop. There's yeah. Some wow. So, what? What's your secret to keeping your trucks clean? Because I've seen, I mean, from the from a mega truckers and other pictures. Your trucks look like they've never been worked before, and I know they're all working trucks. You must have some good tips for guys on how to clean a truck truck right. Yeah, no, listen, the, the boys, you know, the guys that work for me are, you know, are very, very fussy, and they've got a lot of pride in, mm. in what they do. So, you know, um, I, I think it's, you know, it, it's part of their, um, you know, uh, how would you say it? it it's... Um, now, part of their pride shines through even just working here. So, wow, those trucks, those trucks are amazing looking. Can, can you go back to those on your right? Yep. So those are, those are something else. Wow. So we've got a big Kenworth C five hundred eight here, mm-hmm. and then a Western Star sixty nine hundred. So this is just getting ready for sale. Yep. And then we've got Red Dog here. Right. So is this a truck dealership now? Yeah, so I've got a truck dealership where we've got about sort of 25, 30 trucks in stock. Mm-hmm. And, then I've, and then I've still got my heavy haul fleet running around. We're doing a big wind farm project at the moment over in Perth. I'll take yeah. you for a quick quick walk here and sure. I'll show you something that's hiding in the shed. Here's my little bit of America that I get to drive every day. This, 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 re- this reminds me about coming back to catch up with you guys. Walk down here. Now, do, do, are there many American rides in Australia, like that pickup truck? Not really. It's a, it, it's a bit of a um, a minority. Okay. 
Wow, there it is. What's it got? Uh, what's it got? Uh, Twelve speed in that? Um, originally had a, a Mac Nine speed. It's got a thirteen speed Road Ranger in it now. Okay. So we're going to start tearing this down next month and basically put it all back to original, paint it back to the original black magnum. Um, yeah. That is super, good. <clears throat> super, super, super cool original truck owned by Evans and Evans Racing from California. So they had a brand new, so one owner, one driver. Um, just ridiculous condition, 200,000 genuine miles. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's see the inside. Like original... You know, 86 model mm -hmm. original carpet, you know? Yeah, yeah. So it's just like an unmolested sort of um, barn find. And look, we drove this truck 3,500 miles uh, when we were over in the States and yeah. never, never missed a beat. No kidding. That is, that is, you know, just the way it is, it's perfect. I can't imagine what you're going to do to it. So all the magnums came out black. So we're, so we're going to paint it back to the original black. Um, I'm going to put original exhaust back on it. Um, mm -hmm. Just keep it super duper sort of stock. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to change it up too much. Mm -hmm. um, let me just flip flip back around here. So yes, yeah, so I don't want to change it back too much. Just going to keep it nice and original. And um, you know, it, it, it's pretty cool in the sense that. Um, Back when I was a kid, um, we got wheat mix here in Australia, which is a breakfast cereal, and they used to bring out these um, trucker cards. And um, with every box of cereal, you got a different card. And we used to play games at school, sure. you know, with these cards, and we'd swap them and trade them like baseball cards, like you guys did. And back in the day, the biggest horsepower, biggest leader, each biggest torque truck was a Mac Magnum. Mm -hmm. and, yep. and if you have the Mac Magnum Superliner card, you could beat everyone. So, <laughs> and, you know, as a kid, I always wanted to own a Mac Superliner, um, and especially a Magnum. And you know, when this yep. came up, it was like, yeah, I, I need to own, own that yep. truck. And, you know, driving it down um, Route 66 was just absolutely amazing. It's just man, yeah, Mac's a king. Especially up where I am, up in this area, it's all about yeah. Max. I drive this Superliner, I feel like a celebrity sometimes. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, you know, my favorite episode of Mega Truckers was the one, it was, might have been like the first or second one, where all your drivers were getting something done, you're like, let me show you how to do it in an old Mac. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to beat you a time, and you did, that was that was really awesome. Yeah, the old gold digger, yeah, that, that, was, yeah. that was a good episode, that. That was, sure. that was, that had me hooked. Um... Cool man. What's your what's your favorite trucker movie? Um, favorite trucker. It, it, it'd have to be Smoking in the Bandit. I think me and my boys have watched that movie probably fourteen hundred and sixty six times. Uh huh. Before. Uh -huh. And, sure. Um, Joshua, my youngest boy, he's seven. Um, he's he's absolutely truck mad. He's like maybe right. plus thirty percent, which is I, I right. don't even know how that even happens, but yeah. he is, um, and he can just about recite that film word for word yeah sure what do you, what, what do you think will be the number two then convoy um i think I, I used to really like thunder run as a as as a kid you know not not yeah. a lot of people have seen that movie like thunder run and then i suppose you know black dog was a good movie and then over the top you know so yeah, yeah. There's, there's some good classics there have you seen highballing with jerry reed i haven't seen highballing no it's jerry reed you know yeah? He's, he's Jerry Reed's driving a cab over Kenworth. He's a star in Peter Fonda. Fantastic. It's on YouTube. You can just find it. I, I need to check that out. That, that, there's yeah. some good isolation tips right there. That's like my number three right after that in White Line Fever and Convoy Smoking in the Middle. That's cool. Well, it's really great to talk to you so much. Thank you so much for coming on here. No, pleasure. Pleasure. Really, really made my day. If you ever get to Boston, look me up. Or if I come down there, maybe I get a ride in your Magnum there. You, you can come down here and you can drive every truck in the yard. I'd love to show you around. Man, I appreciate it, John. Nice meeting you. You too. You take care. Have you have a good weekend. weekend. All right, Thanks, too. Everyone. Ciao. Ciao. Oh, wasn't that awesome? Everybody, make sure you're following JFK526. That's John's screen, screen name on Instagram. I want to thank everybody for watching my 
special show tonight. I hope everybody's having a good weekend. I have another request here. Let's see who we got. We got, uh, oh, it's gone. I don't see it anymore. Listen, everybody have a good weekend. I'm going to go start enjoying mine and uh, be kind to one another. Boston Drugger out. Take care. Bye.